Welcome, everybody. I'm Lori Laveri. I'm the, the city manager with, with the city. Um, we are holding this uh, meeting tonight as a follow-up from an August workshop that we had as we've moved through with the um, development of our town square project. Um, we've held several public meetings to get input from the community on design features of buildings to um, this relates to the open space and playgrounds. So in, it was, I think, August 28th, we had uh, a shred over at our library um, talking about what, what does the community envision or what do you envision or want in your downtown when it comes to open space and public spaces, park spaces, play areas, outside of the city hall, around, just in the, in the walkable areas. Um, and we're going to show you a little bit tonight of where we took a lot of notes. We had someone kind of manage that information from that workshop for us. Um, and then we promise to come back to you and say, you know, this is what you all said. And as we move forward with the designs of the open space in the play, the play areas, we, we took that information and um, have come up with some ideas. And that's what we want to share with you tonight on what some of our concepts are of what we envision the um, play areas to look like. And, uh, and, and I'm going to introduce Colin in a minute to take you through a presentation. We have our, one of our, our vendors we've been working with on the, for the play equipment called Compan that does some phenomenal stuff. They're, they're actually, I think you're in, they're installing our Oceanfront Beach Park new uh, play piece that's going to be fantastic down there. And did you guys do Meadows? We're working on some for Boynton Lakes. For Boynton Lakes, okay. Yeah, so they've, they've done some work in the city before and they, they really do uh, some beautiful equipment that lasts a long time and really generates uh, the creative use by children. And I was really hoping that the, tonight was really supposed to be focused on hearing from the kids, but I only see one here. <laughs> so put your, go back in time and put your kids' minds on, because that's what we kind of really want to get some feedback on as far as how some of this, the, the play equipment can be utilized and what, you know, we, we wanted to really hear from some of our children, but unfortunately we don't have as many here as I'd love to, love to have seen. But anyhow, we're, we've got a presentation we're going to take you through. Colin Groff, our assistant city manager, and who's been really the, our project manager for Town Square, and you've probably heard him talk a few times on this project. We've been working on it for two years now. Yes. Um, and we've got probably three more to go before we'll see it done uh, with all, all the phases of it, but... Um, He's going to take you through and introduce our, some of our other presenters, and then we'll go through questions, and you take it from there. Okay, so we're glad y'all are here. This is going to be somewhat inter... Whoop. Yes. And, oh, introduce the Mayor Grant's here, so wave your hand. That's okay. Oh, and Commissioner Kelly's here. <laughs> oh, and Mike's here from CRA. I can't see everybody back there. I can only see the front row, so... Um, <laughs> past that, it's all a blur, so... Anyways, so what I want to do first is, so we're excited to be here. We're going to show you some concepts. We're going to walk through what, what we've come up with based on all the input. Um, one of the challenging, one of the exciting things about this project, we asked Compton, which is our consultant, to go, go look for equipment that nobody else has or only one person has someplace else. So it's fairly custom equipment that meets our needs and fits Boynton Beach. So that's what we're going to see tonight. Um, and so we're going to kind of tag team. I'm going to let her introduce herself here. You want to go ahead and introduce yourself. So Hello, everybody. My name is Katie Moffitt. I'm with Compan. Um, we have a U.S. headquarters here in Austin, Texas, in the U.S. Um, but we are a European company, which is really exciting. Um, with that being said, you're going to notice our equipment is very, very different than that of what you guys are used to seeing in traditional play structures. So what we really try to do is encourage children to... Um, use their imagination and creativeness and, and really do non-prescribed play activities, which means, you know, instead of having a very um, obvious route of play, meaning stairs and a slide, we want them to really challenge their physical ability, um, challenge their imagination, really work on teamwork. You're going to see a lot of the equipment is going to be usable by more than one child at a time. Um, so we really encourage kids to play together, um, develop social skills, cognitive skills, um, physical capability. I know with children these days, we're having everybody sit at video games and computers. We want them to really work on um, increasing bone density, muscle strength, um, you know, obviously those, basically the core activities that a lot of kids are missing out on these days. So, <laughs> 
So we're going to kind of sh tell you all those play values as we go through each piece, and we definitely want your opinion and input. Um, but it is something that's going to be very creative and very different, so I'm excited to see your feedback. So it's great to meet you guys. So first I want to see who's here. How many people here know what Town Square is? Okay, how many don't? How many's never heard of the project before? Okay, one or two. So I'm just gonna go really quickly through these first couple slides. So everybody knows what Town Square is. It's 16 acres downtown that we're tearing everything down and building brand new. There's, there's a variety of buildings, including a new city hall, library, a couple parking garages, repurposing the old high school into a cultural center. Uh, there's a couple other pieces to it and there's some private development. But part of the project is these open spaces, which are, um, here, in, in here, and in here. These are big open spaces. So that's what we're going to talk about tonight is what's going on in these open spaces. So I always like to start with, you get a feel for what the architecture is. This architecture, again, was picked in a workshop that we did. But this would be the new City Hall Library building, and this is the high school after it's finished. And you're, you should start seeing that now because we're starting to, you're starting to see windows go in and the roof's finished and some things like that. So you're starting to see this come together. Paint will be soon. Um, so that's what we're talking about. That's the backdrop of what we're going to talk about tonight uh, in the playground areas or the play areas. And we don't really want to call them playgrounds. They're really play areas and open space. So with this, I'm going to turn it over to Katie and let her kind of talk about the inspiration of what we picked based on the input we got. And I must tell you, I've gotten, we've had the workshops where we've gotten input, but I've also gotten hundreds of in pieces of information from all, all public from all over the place, all of our public from all four corners of the city. I've been getting stuff over the last year on, hey, we'd like to see this, we'd like to see that. And I, we've kept every bit of that and we've given it to our consultants and said, hey, here's some things that they want, people want to see. And they've built, I think you'll see that we've built those ideas in. So this is an accumulation of, of a year's worth of collecting data from our public and seeing what they want to see. So with that, go through these real quickly. and. I'll um, flick when you're ready. Sure, yeah. So um, major inspiration with this playground from Compan's standpoint was to make sure that it really felt like home in the community. We wanted um, each element to really tell part of the story, whether it's of the history of Boynton Beach um, or the future where it's headed. Um, so basically this is a nod to your roots as a city where um, basically in the early times, people were drawn to Boynton Beach because of year-round sunshine, because of the coastal um, environment and the ability to kind of feel like you're on vacation all the time. But also, you know, there's a big agricultural presence here um, with the East Coast Railroad, you know, being rooted here and really helping that ag agricultural um, industry thrive. So we wanted to kind of give a nod to all of that in the design for the playground. So this is kind of looking back at your roots. And then moving forward, um, um, you know, when you guys all met um, and did the community forum and we got feedback on what's important to the residents um, and why, and these are some of the ideas. Um, you wanted something iconic. As he mentioned earlier, you wanted something that you can't really find in another city or town. Some of these elements you'll see, um, they're we have installed in, in even Australia, you know, so these are things that we've brought in uh, to Boynton Beach um, for the reasons of really trying to make it feel like home. Learning, exploration, you wanted things that were sculptural, um, something that really has a wow factor, um, that in encourages sensory play, creativity, um, imaginative play, um, things that are vibrant, bright, that'll draw kids in and want them to keep coming back, that will be challenging. Um, so this is kind of all w that went into the, the design and why we did some of the elements that we did. So with this, what we really want, because we want input here. So do you think that these words captured some of y'all that have been involved from day one and those who haven't been, do you think these capture what we're trying to do with play areas? So just a quick raise of hand. Do you think it captures it or it doesn't? If you think it captures it, raise your hand. Come on. All right, good. All right, is there any words up there, any words that are missing up there that you think we should put in there to kind of use? Real quick, and I don't want to spend a lot of time, but real quick. Anybody got any words? I'm going to give you the microphone if you have one. Anybody? Thematic. 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 I don't know what that means, but that's a good word. <laughs> I, I'm, a, I'm an engineer. You know, those words we don't use. <laughs> Pirate Fest, there we go. So that, so that's, a, that's an iconic uh, theme that we can, we can put on. That's a good point. Anybody else have any other quick ones that we, we think we missed? Handicapped accessible. Excellent. 
You're absolutely right. Everything's got to be handicap accessible. That's a good one. I'm going to get one in the back, and then I'm going to go on. Uh, I'm not sure it's up there. Inclusion? Mm -hmm. Absolutely, it's up there. Yeah, we want to make sure our playgrounds are inclusive, handicap accessible, and I think you'll see some of the pieces we're picking are there. I've got one more. So I know you said uh, all ages, but the, the family unit, so just, you know, brothers, sisters, and the parents. Yeah, absolutely. We, that's a good word up there. Multi-generational. Multi-generational. So we got it up there. Yeah, right here. Uh, I saw it just a second ago. In the U. In the U, right the there. Multi-generational. And then inclusive is right next to it. Yeah, there we go. So, so I think we've captured those. Okay, one more, and then I'm done. Well, actually, I don't understand why calming's in there at the same time you got playground. I thought the point of playground was to wear kids out. The calming is for the multi-generational. <laughs> so, <laughs> there you go. All right. So with that, um, basically we ask Compton, take what we give you and put together what you think what makes us Boynton Beach and find some pictures that you think relate to these words. So we ask them to do that. I'm going to let Katie describe what they found, and then I'm going to ask you all if we hit it. Okay. Um, you'll see the picture of this KPOC tree that's in representation of what's so important to you guys here is really uh, maintaining the biodiversity. Um, we obviously have the um, coastal theme going on. Now I understand that there is sea life on that that is not here. However, the point is we want it to have a nod to the ocean and you know the roots of what Boynton Beach is, um, the dolphins, the jellyfish, um, you know, the agricultural side. Citrus was a huge important part of uh, the agricultural and farming and pineapples. Pineapples was huge down, not a, yeah. So um, that's one thing that we really wanted to make sure we incorporated into the design. Um, so anybody have any questions on kind of the inspiration? Okay, real quick, did we miss something? Yeah, um, tomatoes and eggplants, which are biggest crops in this city for decades. That's great. Actually, and I think you're going to like what we see, because you're right. I think we missed a couple crops. Okay, good. That's a good point. A coral reef, an ocean. And we have the ocean and really the coral reefs in the ocean because we are a diving spot. So that's something we, we do. And I think we have some ideas on that, too, how to incorporate that. So that's great. Anything else real quick on this? Sorry, i got to get away from the speaker. Go ahead. How about, oh. how about wild spaces? Yeah, open wild spaces, and I think we were trying to capture that, um, you know, with the whole theme of agricultural, because that's what this is. This is open space. It's urban open space, so it's not real big, but the idea is to capture the feel of open space in an urban environment, um, you know, because it is an urban environment. It's not a rural environment, but yeah, we were trying to capture that, I think, with the trees and the and the farm life and all that. And yeah, we're probably missing a little bit of that. I think you may see some of that later on. We tried to capture that feel of the outdoors. So when you're out there playing, yes, it's, it's structured play equipment, but it feels like it's native, it's, it's playing in the woods. So how do you create woods in a city? And that's what we were trying to do. So you're absolutely right. That's a great point. And that would have been a good picture up there. We missed that one. All right. So, so what we did is Compton took this, and then they, what they did is they started coming up with where do we want to put playground equipment. So we started looking at staff and started looking at all the open space and started thinking about how everything worked together. And we really identified two spaces that we could do play areas in. And that's right behind the Children's Schoolhouse Museum, which is this area, and then the north part of what we call, at some point we can come up with a better name, but we're calling it K Park, K -Park, Park. Say that fast right now, and that's the northern half. So we, we've really come up with two areas. The reason I want to point that out is because that's how we're going to go through and describe some of the ideas and get you all feedback, get you all's feedback on those ideas. So one of the things we wanted to do, though, is when we start off, and there's a lot of parents here to see, we want to make sure that this is more for the adults, not for the kids. We want to make sure we captured everything we want to design around. So what we did is we went through these value concepts we're designing around, and we'll just tag team a little bit on it. The first one's security. For us, it, my number one thing is security. So when you come to downtown, it is safe. You feel safe, you know you're safe, and you know your kids are safe. So security is one of the biggest issues we address when we're laying these things out and try to come up with concepts. Site location, we, we were, we got a lot of feedback on where the site should be. I'm going to be honest with you, I got a lot of feedback. I got some that put it all here or put it all there, or we had a lot of feedback on splitting it, thinking that was a good idea. So we got a lot of feedback. We tried to take all of that 
Again, with a democracy, not everybody wins. <laughs> so we tried to take that and try to take the best of all of everybody's idea and pick a site that worked. And so those are the two areas that kind of came out of all the conversation. You know, availability, I'm going to let you talk about that. Yeah, the quickly. availability is really um, referring to the access to the site. We want people to see that um, you can access it very easily. But we also want, it, uh, we want to stress that we are intending this playground to be used for, um, you know, certain purposes. So we want to make sure that it's being used for the right reasons um, and that there is good, um, it kind of goes back to like transparency as well. We want to make sure that it's a safe location, but that it's being used for the right reasons. So that kind of explains a little bit of the availability. What is it there for? Right. So, and so the real point is, is it goes back time to security. It's available so it's used properly and not used improperly. So that goes to exposure. We want, it, we want to be known as the best play areas in Palm Beach County, maybe in Florida. So that's the exposure. I look at that. A lot of different meanings of exposure, but that's the one I take. Aesthetics. What we want to do is we want to pick pieces, like we said earlier, that fit our artistic theme. I like the theme idea, the thematic idea, because we have an artistic community. We want to fit that with our pieces. We don't want just standard run-of-the-mill pieces that we do put in a lot of our other playgrounds. We want to make this iconic. So the aesthetics, age groups, we definitely wanted to make sure we addressed all age groups within this. And I think you'll see some of the concepts we came up with addresses all age groups. All, and I'm talking about all, from newborns all the way to um, very smart people who move a little bit slower. <laughs> so, um, so a nice way to say it. Uh, so, yeah, to exercise more than I do. I don't exercise at all. It's really bad. It's really bad. So then we want, we want a good user experience. We want people to really experience this. And, and, and all ages come and really can enjoy it together. That's that multi-generational, enjoy it together. Um, play value. I'm going to let you address play value because that's... Perfect. Um, also, user experience goes back to yeah. the idea of inclusion as well. Um, that's right. very, very important in the way Compan designs. Uh, but play value, you know... Every child plays a little bit differently, and we really, Compan really does a lot. Um, we actually have an entire research institute that makes sure that there's a lot of play value packed into every single piece on our playground so that they can be utilized by many kids in very, very different ways. Um, and they can all get challenged, be challenged, and really learn certain things um, in just in different ways, the way that they're ready to learn. Um, so the play value, you'll see, you know, cognitive play, social play, um, balancing, um, you know, improved bone density, muscle strength, stuff like that. Those are the play values that we really want children uh, to, to benefit from, not necessarily just the thrill of going down the slide or going down a fireman's pole. So you're going to see a lot of different play values through this presentation. So then local community, as that's y'all coming in and helping ev everybody be designing this and working on this together. And that's what we've been doing from day one. Um, and then identity. We want this to be an identity for Boynton Beach. Again, we don't want to be like everybody else. We want to be unique to Boynton Beach. So people say, this is unique. This is Boynton Beach. Um, so those are the value concepts that we put into that we ask them to, let's look at these and use these on everything you're doing conceptually to, to, to provide uh, to the city and to the, to, to the citizens to, to choose from. Um, so let's talk real quick. We're going to do some technical stuff here real quick, and then we'll get into really nice pictures. But, so there's really three areas that we're looking at. We're looking at this area behind the Children's School Hut Museum, which is, which is about 16,000 square feet total area. Um, it's got full-grown trees in it for shade. We really like the fact we're able to utilize most of these trees in this area to provide that shade for this playground area. We like the fact that there was a lot of input from people using the Children's School Hut Museum, that they really like the fact is. We're doing a, uh, an, an area for kids, and this is an area for younger kids. That's what we kind of we're proposing, is this would be a younger kid area that kind of would be in the Children's School House Museum and have indoor and outdoor learning. So this has a lot of learning things in it that they can do. And then we have this transition area between the two, which we'll have, we'll have some concrete out there because we've got to have a loading area for the high school. So we're going to talk about putting some things on the concrete the kids can play on. You know, go send your kid out and play, play in the road, but now they don't have to go play in the road. They can play behind the, <laughs> behind the school. And then we transition into this area, too, which is the, kind of the north half of this park, which is both an active area for, for and this is really the older kid area, with an active area for adults. It's benches, it's an exercise loop, it's a walking loop, there's some quiet areas. We've really capitalized on that Kapok tree being the center of that park and really providing that, that big, huge, iconic thing in the middle of the park that people can relate to. Um, 
So that's kind of how we've kind of laid it out. And that's important because we're going to go through each one of these areas and show you what we're thinking about in those areas and then get your feedback. So the first one, again, is this area behind the high school. Again, I mean behind the Children's Schoolhouse Museum, which is about 17,000 square feet of, of, of play area. Um, and let's see. Oh, there we go. I was trying to get. So I'm going to now let, we're going to walk through what we're kind of laid out and how it fits very quickly. And then we're going to go into, so don't. The next couple slides is where I'm going to ask you questions. So I wanted to walk through this and then look through some renderings, and then we're going to ask questions about specific pieces of equipment. So go ahead. And okay. So I'll take a second here, just to acknowledge. Um, sure, I'll try this. Um, to acknowledge that this, for some people, is very hard to look at and understand as far as kind of being 2D. Um, but this is the layout um, down here. Uh, these are going to be swings. Now, when you guys look at these pictures and, and the renderings of these, there are things that we can change. For instance, we were talking about eggplants and tomatoes. We've got oranges here. If you guys want pineapples and eggplants and tomatoes, that's a matter of something that can be so easily changed. So we certainly take that feedback and we can incorporate that. Um, these are gonna be toddler swings. So they're gonna have a two, it's a two bay. There's gonna be two infant swings. Um, and then two accessible swings. So there's a little bit of a larger swing for anybody who has trunk control issues um, and accessibility issues that's a little bit older. Um, so there's uh, the swing set. Oh, I just went back. Okay, the swing set. Then we've got, um, this is a climbing structure. It's a, like a pirate ship. Um, going back to the pirate ship theme, it's a, a, a ship that has over and under play. Um, it has good visibility, so you'll see pictures in a second. Um, there's imaginative play that happens there, um, teamwork, social interaction. It's also a good place for children. Maybe if they're a little more secluded and they like a quiet space, they can you know, go and sit. Um, there's an area, some of the membranes you can kind of lay on, almost like a hammock. Um, so that allows for that opportunity. A junior spica. Um, a spica is a spinning, it's basically a pole on a stainless steel machine grade bearing. Um, and it's, it can spin really very, very fast. Um, you know, not to, not to get too scared. Again, this is from uh, two to five. Um, however, this helps children really develop the inner ear and develop balance. Um, something that I didn't know growing up, and I didn't do spinning things, and I get really dizzy very easily. So this kind of helps children develop that part of their anatomy. Um, then we've got a multi uh, manipulative multisensory play panel, as well as um, this alligator bench. So again, social gathering. Um, and then the play panel, there's different tactile things, different manipulative knobs, things that you can move, bright colors. Um, you know, they can play hide and seek. They can put things through the, the holes on the panel, so kind of learn um, cause and effect if they put something through and drop it. There's a lot of different, um, you know, elements there. Um, going down, we'll go down here, this toddler spin. That's going to be a smaller version for younger kids of this junior spica. So that goes to speak to a little bit of the graduated play. You know, maybe they start out on this smaller one, and the goal is eventually to get onto the bigger one. Um, so it really gives them that challenge, uh, something to look forward to and something to learn on. Chicken and horse farm play. This is a little playhouse. It's got little steps um, for more imaginative play, more social gathering. Um, these are all... For the, this toddler, you know, you have zero to, to two, up to five years old, they enjoy these things. Now, you've got, in the middle here, this is a nod to our history uh, within Boynton Beach with the railroad. Uh, this will be three railroad cars, and then you've got some gathering. This can also be utilized as an outdoor classroom for the museum if they wanted to bring some of the lessons and some of the exhibits outside to talk about, you know, more history of Boynton Beach. And then we've got this uh, tomato a climbing structure, the citrus and tomato climbing structure in the middle. Again, um, more climbing, good for muscle development, good for strength and core. Um, over here, this is one of my favorite pieces that we have. This is a, uh, a seesaw uh, rocker. Um, it's awesome. This thing can fit up to 25 kids. Um, so when you look at these photos, the scale of them is a, it just doesn't do them justice. Um, you know, they're, they're amazing pieces. Um, but you can sit, uh, what we would typically do is have one side an open back. Uh, the other side would have a back, so any child that has trunk control issues can sit in it and rock and still have fun. The beauty of this is if there are no other kids on the playground, they can still play. So you really only need one kid on it, but you can fit up to 20, 25 kids. And I, truth be told, that thing's really fun. I've been on one. 
it's fun for adults too. So they're amazing. Um, the other thing too, and kind of speaking to uh, the accessibility and inclusion, um, the gardens, the, the uh, Seesaw Springer is a great piece um, when you do have members of the community that do have trunk control issues or mobility issues. Um, for instance, if somebody you know, has a caretaker, comes to the playground, they can be put on that platform area in the middle, right here, and they can lay on it and still be you know, playing with the other kids while they're sitting on the ends rocking. You know, these children are having a great time kind of getting the benefits of other kids doing the, the playing, doing the rocking. So they're still included in that, um, the overall uh, play for the thing. So we'll, we'll go. So now we're going to go through the rendering. Okay. Did I go backwards? Yeah, we went backwards. I'm going for, okay, here so, we go. So what we want to show you here, these are renderings. These are not, you know, some people look at this, oh, is that exactly what it's going to look like? The answer is no. We're here to get y'all's feedback on some of these things and what we think it looked like. This is our first go around of how we would do the playground and how it would look in 3D. The colors you see on the ground, and I want to talk about this and then You'll see this in every picture is that's what we call the surface cover. It's a surface, the playground surface. You know, the days of being able to throw mulch down or sand down for a playground are over. You cannot do that anymore. It's not allowed. It's not legal. And we don't do that. So these are poured in place rubberized surfaces that are designed, different levels designed for the play equipment that's on them. The beauty about it is you can color them into these kind of colors. So you can actually create an artwork on the ground that's safe. It lasts a long time. From a maintenance standpoint, we... My maintenance side of me loves this stuff because it's very easy to maintain. Uh, it keeps clean. It stays nice. So what you're seeing here is the equipment plus the surfacing that you put under it. And beyond the surfing is just as expensive as the equipment, but it's, it's worth every penny you pay because it makes it a safe area. So these are just some renderings of how it would look with these pieces that she just described. described. And then we're going to get in and show the individual pieces. So this would be a shot looking at probably from... This would probably be from the, the looking west, right? Yes. No. I'm sorry, looking east. So this is looking east uh, into the playground from a little bit higher level. Go to the next. Let's do the next one. Okay. Yeah. Oh, there we go. So this is looking, if you see that wall in the back, it's not going to look exactly oh, like that. Hold on. But, here we go, this wall. Yeah, there we go. That wall is the parking garage. So you can see how we've incorporated into the parking garage some of this play area so it blends in. And again, you can see how the play areas fit together and how there's a lot of open space in between them. We want to make sure we have the benches for the parents. The one thing I want to point out on these renderings it's easy to see is what I saw right away when I looked at it, trying to remember back when my kids were this age, which was a long time ago, but is you can, you can sit here in one of these benches and you can see the whole area and see where your kids are the whole time. There's no really place where they're going to get out of your sight, which I think is that goes back to that security issue for parents that we're really concerned about. Um, this is another slide, looking straight in. This would be the toddler's area, that two, zero to two-year-old. You can see these smaller play areas for toddlers, little spinning things. Uh, there's, a, there's a theme here of farming that we can get into. So, again, it's an educational area. So the Children's Schoolhouse Museum can actually bring um, um, educational things out into the playground and use the playground also as part of their educational thing. So these are pictures of what this is going to look like. So now what we want to do, now that you've seen kind of some pretty pictures... So we want to talk about each piece of equipment. And what I'm going to do is we're going to talk about each piece of equipment. And then I'm going to ask you, thumbs up, thumbs down. Do you really like it? Do you hate it? Or are you neutral? If you're neutral, just you're neutral. But um, because what we want to do is, is if, if, if people say, no, this is a terrible piece of equipment, we want to take it out and find something else to put in. So, yeah. So I'm going to let you talk about it, and I'm going to point to them. Yeah. All right? We didn't practice this, so we're practicing it in front of you all. Um, so first, we talked about, she's already talked about this ocean seesaw that's in the middle. So we're talking right now about this center area in this playground. So this is this area right here surrounded by this walkway. So the first one is this ocean seesaw. We've already talked about that. So I'm gonna, how many people think that's a good idea? All right. I think there's a, oh, right, good. That's a majority. Enough. Excellent. And if you can see in the, the rendering, one side has a back, the other doesn't. Yeah. Seems and we do that right. on purpose. We want right. everyone to be able to play, even if they can't hold themselves up. And again, be, being on springs, it's, it's one person can do it and move around on it. And the other thing I know my kids would do, and I know other kids would do, is they're going to climb all over that too. Not just a swing a seesaw, they're going to climb all over it too. Uh, do lots of fun things over there. But again, the surface underneath it, the ground surface is so important around these. So when they fall, it's designed for that. 
So we want to make sure they're safe when they're using it. All right, Dolphin Springer. Talk about that. Okay, the Dolphin Springer is essentially a mini version of this larger Springer. It allows kids that, um, for instance, I'll give you an example. With autistic children, they like to do things individually on their own. Sometimes they like to be a little bit secluded. So in that case, you know, we give them an opportunity to kind of have their own activities so they can feel, you know, they're learning a little bit about their rocking. It helps with the core control. Um, you know, so there, there's the... Uh, uh, play value with that. You've got the dolphin. We've got two of these in the drawings. You've got the dolphin to, to nod to the coastal feel of Boynton Beach. Um, and these actually are, again, everything is a little bit larger than what it looks in the picture. So it can accommodate a pretty large child. Um, so just kind of wanted to, it, it gives the kids more of an individual um, play factor. So I'm going to put her on the spot now and ask, it's a dolphin now. Can it be a sailfish? <laughs> we might be able to do a shark. So oh. we may be able to make a shark look like a sailfish. <laughs> we can so. all look into it. <laughs> yeah. So anyways, what do you guys think about that? Um, Go ahead. I think you need more. Okay. We'll get yeah. That. No, because two is not enough. Right. So we have that. We have. Okay. So there's two of these right here. Mm -hmm. So. The all right. Out of control, you need more. Okay. Good comment. Everybody like it? Raise your hand. All right, I got a. There we go. See, so like it. All right, thumbs up from the kid in the back. <laughs> okay. Oh, we got two. Where's the other one? Oh, do you, do you like this? You can say yes or no. No. <laughs> she likes her movie that she's watching. It's all good. It's all good. I'd rather be watching a movie too. So go ahead. I don't know if they're still in the existing playground, but the ones that were put in, they break really fast. Yeah, absolutely. That's one of the things we've asked Conta is whatever they put in here, these have to be 20 and 30 year pieces of equipment. We're not having anything that's going to break. They've got the experience. They're yeah. telling us. So I can, I can totally answer that. <laughs> so, um, very understandable. And what you'll find is you're going to get tired of our equipment before it reaches its use life, um, which means... Basically, these panels, anything that you see up here is either going to be galvanized steel or, or um, stainless steel. So you're not going to have the rusting and corrosion that you're normally going to have with just regular steel um, equipment. Uh, all of these panels are called HDPE, high-density polyethylene. That stuff, you cannot destroy it. It's, um, it is made from recycled material, and it is 100% recyclable. So everything that we have is considered green. Um, and sustainable. But as far as the springs go, um, everything and the, the braces, anything that basically makes these structures, um, these, uh, the citrus tree, all of that, that's going to be galvanized steel. So you're not going to have a rusting issue. How about a 150 pound, 200 pound, 200 pound teenager in the middle of the night? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah. We have, um, we have a structure in Seattle, Washington, right at the foot of the, ba the Space Needle. And um, grand opening day, I think they had 400 kids on it. So when we say that we make this stuff for the hottest of hot, coldest of cold, you know, most extreme, harsh weather environments, the heaviest of people, I mean, it's going to take a lot to really even damage the equipment. And, and one of the things we've asked is all of the stuff we're designing, we're, we've asked them to look at. So if somebody happens to be able to damage it, can you take that piece off and replace it? And the answer is most of this is yes. You can take it off. You can replace it very easily. And that's one of the things we're looking for because whatever we do, we want to make sure we can maintain. That's been the prop challenge that we've had in the city is maintaining. So we want to make sure it's easy. So they, we have addressed that in all of our equipment. I mean, we, we've told them specifically we do not want anything that is not heavy-duty, long life and easily fixed if somebody does figure out how to damage it. Because you're right, somebody will may figure out on one of these pieces how to damage it. All right, so all right, I gotta go ahead. Well, I'm just wondering, are, are these renderings accurate? Are those springs actually exposed like that on both of those things? Yes. yes. And it is impossible to compress them enough to pinch anything. So everything has been completely tested where you'll never get a compression so much that there's ever going to be a pinch hazard. Everything is ASTM certified. Um, all of our, anything that's sold in the U.S. goes through like insane ASTM certification standards. 
So. And, and again, that's something we require in our warranties and all that to make sure that happens. So let's go. we'll never get through this if I don't go. But so this is the next thing, which is a citrus tree climber with, with a race health. And again, this is zero to five. So really quickly, say what that is. Social gathering, climbing, a little bit of a hideaway area, um, kind of a, a teamwork area where you can play hide and seek and they can make uh, games out of that. Um, I, I, there, I, there's so many ways kids can play with it. <laughs> and this is one too, I think we can, we can change the theme around a little bit to maybe match going to maybe citrus isn't it maybe it's a little bit different theme um i think this is a piece we can do some of that on with some colors and things to to get it closer so the concept is is what we're looking for and we got to still work on it because i love the concept of tomatoes and eggplants so we need to build that in so this is a place where we can start bringing some of that in so what do you think about this piece climb in and all right i got i got a bunch of hands that like that So yeah, now this one actually is located under a tree canopy, so it's already, most of this playground is gonna be under tree canopy. The climber, when we get to it, we haven't got to that. When we get to that, that's outside the shade. We've already talked to them about adding some shade to that structure. So what the goal is to put shade on everything, because we, we are in Florida, absolutely. So we, we're trying to make sure that the actual play areas, we also want some areas with sun, because you don't want kids in shade all the time, because they're inside all the time anyway, so you gotta get a little bit of sun. But that's 10, 10 minutes or so, because we're in Florida. Oh, uh, what? Oh. Oh, that's a good one. I, I want to say it's about 17 to 20 feet high. I want to say that. So these are, these are big structures. They're, they're big. That's what I'm saying, these photos. It, it's hard to tell. These photos, these things are huge. Um, so what's under the tent? It's yeah. a net, yeah. So it's almost like a hammock. They can you know, pretend they're camping. Um, you know, the idea is kind of almost like maybe a treehouse kind of functionality of it. Um, again, kids but, use these things so many different. But ways. it's not long enough to sleep under. Right. Yeah. <laughs> for an adult, it's not comfortable enough. It's not comfortable for enough. an adult to really <laughs> so. fall asleep under because you've got the the ropes. Well, that's you know, and that's a great. Susan brought up a great point, and I know I got to keep moving, but you know, again, going back to security issues, one of the issues we've had is how do you secure these things at night? We're working on a security plan, so at night, we're, we should, we're gonna have presence down there. So if somebody comes in at one o'clock in the morning and they start playing around, that park is closed, they're gonna, not gonna be there. They're gonna be, they're gonna be moved off because that park will be closed at whatever time we decide to close it. And that may change depending on the day of the week and whatever, because remember, there's people living around here too. This isn't just, there's people working here, living here, so it's gotta be compatible. So that's a great point that we have to address through the design, is how do we make sure we can close these parks and keep, after hour things from happening. So we are definitely going to address that. No, absolutely. You're right. So going down, there's a musical play area in this center area, which... Um, we don't have that depicted because yeah. Compan didn't specify musical play elements. We do have some available, um, but there was Urban Conga. Yeah, so we're elements. looking at another company to bring in a couple of their pieces that you've seen. I know Susan's seen it, but there's a company that makes these really cool... Oh, yeah, here. Sorry, Debbie, I didn't see you in the back. I didn't see y'all, so <laughs> I can't really see that far, so until you wave. But, um, you know, so we're going to bring in some of those. So this is a musical area where we can bring in some of those concepts of some instruments where people, kids can play with. So then going down, we have these Stepping Stones outdoor classroom, which I think is really cool because it's, it's really passive, but it's an area you can sit, you can stand on, and we can do it, and that's, that's that classroom area. So what do we think about, what do, first, musical instruments. Do you think musical is something people would like? Yeah, oh, I got lots of yeses on that one. And what about an area where they can kind of stand and walk and sit for some outdoor training? I think people, yeah, good. I'm seeing a lot of yeses on that. So now we get to the train. Yeah, oh, I'm sorry. How close are they? Are they, are they very close and kids try to jump from one They're, to the other? So it depends on the, the size and diameter uh, and how many you do. But they would basically position them so that they could, like, step one... Each, I, I don't know that they would on a zero to two or zero to five playground though. I think they would be pretty far apart where they're not tempted to jump. Um, and just to kind of give you guys background as far as uh, maintenance and everything on this, these are actually um, sculptural forms that are concrete. Um, so they're meant to feel and look like wood, but be low maintenance. Um, and then also, you know, obviously that's the longevity of them. They're gonna last forever. So. Yeah, and they're really, they're a play area because you can use them in all kinds of ways, but they're also an area to do that educational thing with. So it's really a dual purpose area. Um, so yeah, that's a great that's a great point though. When we design it, we need to make sure we address that. Museum director really liked that idea. 
Yes. Mm-hmm. So again, there's some security issues with this too that we're using some of this equipment we're putting in a specific place because it does some protection, it does some separation. So some of those things we take into account when we're trying to lay out where things go. So, all right, so the next one is this uh, train, which this is my favorite one, but that's not because I love trains. So um, so to talk just really quickly about this because we're yep. gonna run out of time. The, so. the train's pretty simple. I mean, it gives imaginative play. On the inside, there's some manipulation, uh, some manipulative panels. So it gives kids, you know, the ability to gather, have social social gathering, um, so but it really, it's, it's like more this. of a social thing. It doesn't move. No, it doesn't it move, but it's, it looks like it's on a track and all that. So um, I really like that piece because I'm a, I'm a train guy. So <laughs> um, so then this, then we get outside. So we, we get outside this round circle and we get into some of these exterior areas. So we have this, what we call sensory grass blade panels which again is another, to me, is a cool piece sitting up against the garage too, because it's taller, it's gonna act as some art. If you notice, a lot of these pieces are very artistic. They're not just standard play pieces. So how do you use this one, real quick? So they can play peekaboo, they can pass things through the, the holes. All the manipulative pieces um, allow for kids to learn how things move through open spaces. Um, there's also some textured parts on it, so they understand the differences in texture. Um, obviously, they're, they're bright colored from what you can see here, the bright yellows, there's bright greens and reds. Um, so kids learn colors that way as well. Um, just looking at the contrast there, the different knobs, anything that twists, um, anything that you can move. So, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask the question if you like it here in a second, but then the alligator bench kind of goes along with it. To me, that's a place to, for kids to sit, but it's also for me, it, when I was a parent, that's where I would be sitting to watch my little. Remember, this is zero to five-year-olds. This is small mm-hmm. kids, so this isn't for big kids. Now, will there be big kids getting in here? Yes, absolutely. So they're designed to handle that, but you're not. the goal is to give them, and we're going to show you where we give them. So they really may not want to be in here, but if they are, let's say there's an eight-year-old, and there's, let's say there's a family with a, with a two-year-old, five-year-old, and eight-year-old. They can all have fun on this with, with the parents because these things, whether we say five-year-old, an eight-year-old is going to have fun on a lot of these things too. Mm-hmm. So it really is trying to get that gap so when you're a parent, you can go to one place. And then you can, when, you go, when we go to the other side, you'll see that the same family can do that too where the older kid will have more fun and the younger kid still has things to do. So I just wanted to point that out real quick. Um, the bench can be used for hide and seek, yeah. peekaboo, that kind of stuff for the smaller kids as well. So when we think bench as adults, we think sitting. And these kids are going to climb on it. They're going to like sneak around it, crawl around it. You know, try to hide from each other. I'll move on. <laughs> no, no. This is so. The question was: Is there only one bench? This is a kids' bench. There's going to be adult benches everywhere. So we don't. We're not showing you because that's not part of the playground. That's called what we call hardscape. So we are designing benches into all of our parks. People can sit and, and, and talk and have places to, to to watch. So yeah. So that's a great question. It's more and of a, that's two-sided. Yeah, it's two-sided, and yeah. yeah, I wish I had a, we had a better picture. We don't. So this area right here, real quick, yes, no, what do you think? I'm getting lots of shakes. Okay, good. I like that. Right now, we're proposing one again. Um. Now again, <laughs> and and this is this is perfect actually. Um, when you think of this spinner, you think only one adult can use it. You can get like three to four kids on that. You know, so it's challenge, it's group activity, it's see how fast we can go. Um, you know, when you see one item, you that's prescribed play. The way we learned how to play, you go up the stairs and down the slide. We're encouraging kids to figure it out on their own. So you can get four or five kids on these things. On the, the adult spica, we have a video of six girls spinning on this one post. It's crazy. So... But it looks it's, like a lot of fun to it, me. It's a lot of fun. I mean, and, and being an adult, again, I've gotten on one of them. And as an adult, you tend to, like, clench and, like, hold the, the, um, the post really close to you. Well, that makes you go faster, you know, because you're not leaning away and you don't have that kind of stopping motion. You're now going much faster. So I had to, like, put my foot out and make someone, like, stop it. I mean, it's really fun. But I'm – spinning was not my – all sense. right, so, and then in the, the same area, again, this is the really zero to two. This is the toddler play area, really. So this is another chicken farmhouse. Again, it's a learning piece. It, 
it fits in with the farming. What we try to do is incorporate some of that farming uh, themes into the end of the thing. So, you know, a little bit of farming colors. It's a little, you saw it earlier when I showed that rendering. It's really a slide and a little walk up and lots of different ways to play. And this will be under a tree. Correct? Yeah, and it's under a tree. Yeah, this is this whole area. This, this pretty much whole area right there is under tree canopy. We're going to do something in here. We, we're planting some trees in here, and this is the only piece that's kind of not but we're looking at some canvas canopies over that too, and you'll see that in a second. And we're not just, just to address that, and the canvas canopies may or may not be necessary because right. there are membranes on that piece for over under play where kids can go underneath and they're in the shade. So you may not necessarily right. need canopies so unless you We're still you working through those, but the idea is shade. So, all right, so what do you think about the toddler zero to two? Who's zero to two here? <laughs> You're going to have a zero to two year old very soon, yes. like tomorrow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so like it now. His, his wife is getting ready to have a baby tomorrow. So, <laughs> so we're excited about that. Um, so anyways, all right, I got a lot of yeses on that, a lot of nods. So um, again, going back to the outside area. So this is the third area right here. We've got this, and we, this is a big piece, and I wish we could show it as big as it is. It's just hard to show. So this is really three pieces. So we're going to talk about this first. This is a climbing ship, and she talked about these membranes. See how these membranes are? We've asked them, is there a way to put like a sail on here that becomes some, some shade on there? So we're going to talk about that. Again, these are very conceptual. Um, so we're going to talk about that. But this is, this, if you dealt, it looks like a ship, but it's open. So one of the things, again, security, we don't want things closed in. That's not the way we design playgrounds anymore. We want it open, but you can still tell what it is. This looks like a lot of fun to me, but I'm not a kid. So, and along with that, do you want to talk anything about that one? Anything um, else? Or did just, I? No, did you, I covered, cut everything? you covered everything. Okay. Yeah, um, <laughs> you know, with the rope, he was saying if something gets damaged, you don't have to replace the entire structure. Uh, the core cord ropes are made in a way, even it's going to take forever for them to even start showing wear and fray. But basically, your maintenance crew can come up with um, a torch and basically it'll smooth right out with heat when you apply heat to it. So again, we make these things for longevity. Um, they are steel reinforced through an induction process. So in each rope, you're gonna have uh, five to six, I think it's five um, steel um, wires that go through it. And those are never, it's never gonna wear to the point where you're gonna get you know, any kind of issue with that. Uh, but then we can also put at the, on the flag the Boynton Beach logo if you want to do that. So that's a little bit customizable so you can make it yours and really kind of brand it. So then in the same area is this, this another spinner. Again, you ask how many spinners do we have. If you see, there's a lot of things in here. They're just in different areas so kids can gather and kind of do similar things but in different areas. So that's probably pretty self We've already talked a lot right. about the spinner. So this area right here is an area where you know, what we kind of looked at, it's, it's really the little bit older kids. It's a two to five. It's not, a toddler could get on there, but they're probably not going to crawl up on there. But uh, you put a three and four year old on there, anybody who's had three and four, you know what they're going to be doing. That's going to be, you're going to have a hard time getting them off of there. So what do we think about this area? Now, again, let me show you where this is. This is, remember, this is the high school building right here, and there's a parking garage right here, and this is that transition area between the two playgrounds. So you can actually stand over here, and you can look over here, and you can see it. So... What do we think about that area with those two? Yes, no? Who really likes it? All right. Yeah, we need, oh, definitely some branding. And we've talked about that on a couple pieces where we can do some. And, I, and like I said, I like your idea of the more pineapples, right. tomatoes, we'll do some of that stuff built so in. So. And then the and Pirate Fest branding. Yeah, yeah. We could even work with our surfacing vendor um, to, you know, in that big area where that lar the larger Springer and the two other Dolphin Springers are, maybe we could put the, you know, Boynton Beach logo in there. You know, it's possible to put a logo in the, the pour-in-place rubber. So that's definitely an option. So, so then the last area in this, this whole junior area is a swing set because kids love swing sets. And, again, it's two older, uh, more uh, ADA accessible type swings, and then it's two you know, infant swings for them. I mean, this is two to five. And again, it's just a standard swing set. Um, and and we, we, we're going to put some a lot of vegetation around there so we get some shade because that's another area that won't have a lot of shade at the beginning, but if we get some stuff planted and stuff, it'll be fine. It'll, it'll grow up. It'll be some beautiful shade in there. So what do we think about swings? People like swings, don't like... I'm seeing lots of like swings. So the other thing we want to do here, though, security, is we have some fencing in here, too, that we need to put in to, so kids don't run into the swings. So there's some security, again, safety issues we're going to address with some fencing stuff that you don't see here. 
So that overall is that playground. So now we want to go to the other area because this is zero to five year olds. Now we want to go to the other area. And this is what's exciting about this project. We came up with really two areas to build these things in. Um, and this again was, uh, whoops, did I go right? Yeah. So again, this was, this was, this came out of input from the public. I mean, I, I received a lot of input of, why don't we do something on the side? Some people said do it all on the other side. Some people wanted it both ways. And we kind of listened to everybody. We, we heard everybody and tried to build something that was sort of in the middle. But I think this is exciting because again, it's, it's about this area right here is about 27,000 square feet. It's a big area. But it's not all playground, it's playground and more adult. So this area is laid out where you have the older kids. Whoops, I still missed it. Man, we have, we have these words that just show up just on show our slideshow. We don't know where they're coming from. <laughs> they just show up. <laughs> so it's a little surprise. We're having a treasure hunt. Um, but this is the, 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 the kids' play area here. And then we have more of the adults. So these are, these are, this is a walking loop, a sitting loop. We've got the big K-Bok tree. We're going to do some things to protect the tree with vegetation because we don't want people coming up the tree, damaging the tree, but at the same time being able to enjoy that tree. Um, and really of that subtropical or tropical environment because that's the environment those trees grow in. You know, they are a tropical rainforest tree, and so we want to kind of recreate that. But this, so that's what this is laid out. This is more of the kids' active play, and this is more of the passive. But what we've done is we've laid out some exercise areas, and we'll talk about that in a second. So adults go out there and actually get some exercise. So that's why I said this is for all ages. From zero all the way up. So with that, let's see here. So this is, go through the, you want to go through the plan real quick? Sure. Point it out here. All right. Uh, I'll point and there's, you say. So yeah. we'll start in the middle here. Okay. So we always like to start in the middle. And this is a great piece. So tell us what that piece is. So this is a big jellyfish. Um, <laughs> it's a climbing structure. Um, it's, it's huge. Uh, this thing stands about 18 feet tall. Um, and then we have a big slide that comes down for kids to climb up. They can gather inside. They can look over, see kind of a more of a bird's eye view of the park. And then we can they can slide down. There's going to be ropes down. You, every, you see all those lines coming out off of it. Um, those ropes allow for kids to kind of climb on, um, kind of chase each other around. Um, and then also there's an underneath play area, so it's high enough. So any child who might be um, disabled, have a wheelchair, any other kind of accessible um, mode of, of transportation, I would say, to get around, they can get under there with that, so it's not limiting. Um, so that's our giant jellyfish. And then, whoops, oh, shoot. <laughs> oops, I'm that, going to roll it. There we go. There we so go. the next area, that's this area. So you see also, I want to talk about the surface area. So we can design these ocean bubbles or some waves or stuff mm -hmm. into this surface. So that's actually in the surface, so it becomes art also for the kids to really have some imagination while they're up there. They can mm -hmm. see some things. And in this same area, we've also got another large multi-spinner, which we'll show in the middle, which is, again, these multi, lots and lots of kids get on. How many kids do you think can get on that? So there's five official seats for it, but you can pile kids on it, and they love it. Um, you know, kids kind of can sit almost between each other or hold each other on, so that encourages teamwork and socialization. Um, you know, they can basically make new friends. The other cool thing about this, in the way that it requires teamwork, is if the kids start communicating, they can manipulate, it's on an angle, so they can manipulate that spinner to go a little bit faster when they work together, which is pretty neat. Um, so, I mean, I would say five is the, what is obvious, but you can fit probably right. eight, nine, maybe ten kids. So on. then moving over to, again, swing set, so we, 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 we picked out some swing sets, and they call it the clamshell swing sets, mm -hmm. and we'll see some pictures of that. Um, so they're high-capacity uh, uh, swing sets, swing seats, yes. um, which means... I mean, even <laughs> lots of adults can get on those. Um, so, again, you're not having a weight issue, um, but then also because of the structure of the seat, it's not your typical um, traditional belt. It's actually kind of a bird's nest. So anybody who, again, going back to trunk control or any other mobility issues, their caretaker can help assist get them into the swing, and then they can swing with all of the other kids. Um, so again, that goes back to universal play and inclusion. We, we don't want that child to be left out. Um, so whether they can sit up, stand up, lay in it, whatever it may be, they can still enjoy it. So then we move around and we have this, uh, it's a giant frog, basically. And it's, um, it's actually pretty cool. It's two layers, it's climbable. It's like the old, I'm trying to think of what they used to be called. Um, you climbed all over them, they were round. Jungle gym. There we go. I can't remember. But it's like the old jungle gym, but it's modern. It's what kids use today. So 
that's this piece, and you'll see it here in a minute. And that flows into what we call the wetland marsh area. And these are, when you see the pictures, they look like a wetland marsh. But what they are is they're climbing things. You can climb all over them like trees. How many kids like to climb trees? Every kid likes to climb trees. This is climbing trees in the urban environment. Um, so they really are, they're big reeds that you can climb, and they're pretty cool. So we'll show you some pictures of that. And then, at, like I said, as we come around, we have all these. So, so there, there's, there's four or five really big pieces in this area, and these are for 5 to 12-year-olds, but 16-year-olds will have fun, and so will adults. Mm -hmm. So this is an area, if you're an adult and you want to play with your kids, it's a great place to play. And then as we come around here, we'll show you what, what we're talking about around here for the adults, and that's the exercise. We'll show you what that looks like. So that's overall what it looks like. And then we like to go through, what is the rendering? So there's that large uh, jellyfish with the slide and with the ropes coming down where you can climb up and down. There's more pictures I'm going to show you. There's that giant frog. This is that marsh reed area that you can climb on. This is those clamshells. And again, you can see how they're using the surface to really create play areas that are, artist, that, that are art. Um, so it's, it's public art in a play area. Um, so there's another picture of it. You can see how, it, how it's got this big thing in the middle of it. And we're going to, again, we'll get to the individual pieces just like we did on the other one. I just wanted to show you the pictures. Again, swing sets again. There's what those reeds look like. And you say, how do you climb them? You can see the steps on them, how you can climb up just like a tree. And think American, American Ninja Warrior, right, where it's yeah. obstacle courses. You go one to another. Kids like to race each other through them or run between them. So again, going back to the idea, isn't a playground meant to burn kids out? Yes. You know, they can definitely use this as more of a cardio, um, strength building, core building. And then the same with the frog. You can climb up that. You can climb on the underneath part of it. Um, and then you can also use it on the top. Kids, teenagers love it for social gathering, um, especially teenage girls. They like to, they're more laid back, more relaxed, so they can climb to the top of it, lay down, kind of hang out up there. Um, but again, being ropes, it's not a place that somebody would be comfortable sleeping unless they brought an air mattress with them. <laughs> um. uh, that's going to be, I would know, it's, it's right around, it would say maybe eight feet tall. Yeah. It's taller than a tall adult so that you don't have a super tall person walking right into it. But it's not like 20 feet tall. So with that, and, you, and I want to show you this because this is that round where you have some exercise equipment for adults in here. Not a good rendering of the Kapok tree, but <laughs> we're going to get one in. But that's the Kapok tree. If you just can imagine a much bigger tree than that, but oh, we're, we're working on that. We don't have all the. Well, go ahead. We got a question back here. Oh, 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 oh. Uh, if the children fall, mm -hmm. what kind of consequences are laid out for them? Um, so again, going back to the surfacing options, the surfacing for this is going to be the pour-in-place rubber. Um, so it's going to be a thicker, a, when you fall, it's like spongy. Yeah. Right. So it's designed, all of these pieces of equipment, again, for safety, they're designed and tested for kids falling and not getting serious. Now, can you get hurt on these? You can get hurt on anything. A kid can get hurt on anything. The idea is we're trying to design it so it, that there's the least amount of possibility for a kid getting hurt. Uh, with the rubberized port in place is a very safe uh, surface for kids to play on because it is soft. Um, so let me see. Let me see if there's another. I think there's another picture here. Oh, so we'll get to these. So now we're going to talk about the individual pieces because this is where I really want to get feedback because these are much bigger. Oh, we have one more question. Let me get that back. I noticed you have from the, um, the I guess the one with the slide area. Uh -huh. Is there a possibility to put uh, a zip line? where they're zipping down from one piece to the next piece. I like that. <laughs> we got to ask our expert if they can design it. Our risk manager may yes. not like that. but um, I think because of the height from that high, the zip line would be too high. It would pose too much. Now, of a there may be a way to do one where your fall off the zip line is very short, but you can still go across. We'll talk about that. We That's do, a great idea. We do have zip lines, but typically you don't want to put them, you know, when you go, let's say you go on vacation and you go zip lining between the tree canopies or, you know, you go on a cruise and you zip line that one in Haiti, right? You have a harness on, you know, we're not putting harnesses on these kids. We want them to learn to take risk. 
but we don't necessarily want to just like set them up for failure and have them fall right on like right on their face. But I love the idea. It's, it's a great <laughs> idea. It is a great idea. idea. It, it's a little too high for a zip line. All right, so let's get to the equipment here. All right, so this is that uh, jellyfish piece, which is about how high? 18, 18 feet. feet. Mm -hmm. So it's about 18 feet up, and it goes in the middle. Again, you see the slide and the ropes coming down. Again, this picture doesn't do great justice to it, but mm -hmm. talk a little bit about how they play. So they can come up into it any, in a lot of different ways. They can play inside. They've got the slide. And what I saw in it, and she probably doesn't like to hear this, but you can actually climb up the outside of the slide and all that too. So there's a ton of different ways for kids to play around on this. Um, and that's that center piece. You want to talk about anything? Is there anything else on that? I or? think we covered it all on the Okay. Picture. So what do you think about this jellyfish? Because this is a really important thing. Because it's a, it's a big piece, and it's a big center piece of it. What do we think? Yes? No? Comments? Oh, I got... Yeah, this is... Do we and have... We don't have one of these in Florida. And I am, if we even have one in the U.S., I think we might in, like, Alabama. But there is maybe a handful, if that. So, so it's, it would be unlikely that anybody visiting this park is ever going to have seen that structure. All right. I got lots of yeses on that one. I got lots of enthusiastic yeses. That's great. Love that. All right. So going over again, this area right here, because that's the multi-spinner, by the way. So I should have pointed that next. But see, yeah, they can sit in the, the little cup seat so they can really get going. And it's tilted. So if you gather on one side, you can do it one way and do it another way. So, again, what do you think about that piece? Because these are the ones that – what do you think? Yeah. <laughs> I know. That's the only thing that I'm a little nervous about. But they swear it's designed not to do that. So. To do what? <laughs> Kids will just spin off of it and go flying across the park. No. So because it's, um, because it's angled, I, I've, everybody's seen those YouTube videos where people bring, like, a motorcycle onto the – playground, which I think security-wise, that's not even going to be possible anyway, but um, it, because it's on an angle, you know, they would have a really hard time kind of lining everything up, and then as far as, it is a machine-grade stainless steel bearing um, that is, I mean, it's lifetime lubricated, so this thing's going to last a long time, but you're not spinning a kid like 40 miles an hour on this. Um, it's, they're they're going to feel like they're gonna going be fast, fun. but they're really not. But you have to understand, again, it's self-propelled speed. So they can only go as fast as the group of them can make it go, which for children, even teenagers, I would say for teenagers, it's even harder to go faster. But if it was my brothers and I, we'd figure out a way to put the brothers on there and play kamikaze on that and see who gets thrown off first. But that's okay because we're going to have a nice soft surface for them to get thrown yeah. off on. Yeah. And, and that's, how pe that's how kids learn how not to do things. Right? There'll be plenty, <laughs> at least, at least plenty of surface. My brothers and I, that's how we learn not to do things. So we had to jump out of a couple trees to figure out that it hurts when you jump out of a tree. So. <laughs> yeah. Is there any correlation between the, uh, the thickness of the, the, the rubble or something when you fall based mm -hmm. on what piece of equipment? Yes. So based Absolutely. on the fall heights is the way they determine the thickness of the surfacing. No, the color coordination is purely decorative. Yeah. So yeah. So you design it so that fall zone has the right the right surface underneath that area. And I'll be honest with you, the way they've laid it out, it is pretty much like that because they've laid it out into, if you see, well, if you look at here, this is that fall area and you can see now blue, it may be thinner up in this area and down in here because you don't really need it, but that color blue is, the, is designed for that piece and this color blue is designed for that piece. And so it, it is sort of like that, but we also want it to be artistic. So you don't want to go exactly because then you'll have areas that don't have any, it doesn't flow. They're trying to actually design art on the, on the ground. So art... You do it as close as you can, and then you get a little bit outside of that. So, yeah, but you're right. Right. It, it's, I think the way I, I like this because they, does, they do, do use colors to identify the play areas, which I think is important. All right. So we, I think I got a bunch of yeses on. All right. The giant frog. What do we think about that? Oh, I get lots of yeses on that. That's great. That was the one we were like looking at and saying, this is really cool. They're I don't think anybody else thinks this is cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, if it was a gator, some people would be happier. <laughs> I mean, 
Not yeah, me then you personally. Have the Seminole but... fans, and then they're going to lobby that they want something else. So I, I don't know. I think the frog might be a little more neutral. Yeah. So, um, you, it's a climb. It's, 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 it's the newfangled jungle gym. You climb up on yeah. it, you lay on top of it, you hang off of it, you swing. You can climb under it. People, like older kids that want to test their strength. So you can climb, climb up the back it. side, you can climb up the front side, you can climb over these things, you can swing from it, and you can see the height, you know, you, you, it, it's taller than the top, that's not a great picture, because it is actually taller than it's a taller tall than adult. taller than that guy. <laughs> so you don't run into it as an adult. Yeah. So, all right. So I got a lot of yeses on that slide, so let's go to the next one. So this is the other two areas. So we'll start with the clamshell swing. You see how these are set up. Um, they're not a standard swing set. They're something you just get into and you envelop and then you can swing. The only question I had was how many different directions can you swing in and will you hit anything? So I'm sure they sure. design it so you can't. You swing forward and back. You yeah. see the two connection points. And so it can't so really swing not, the other way. It's, it's not a, a circle movement. So if I remember with the two swings, remember you could get going sideways and you could run into each other? This doesn't allow that. <laughs> so. oh, it depends on how big those people are. I mean, I've seen pictures where there's 25 kids on one swing. I don't know. I can look it up. It's, it's substantial. It's, it's yeah, probably it's three to four feet diameter. Yeah. So it's really, so one kid can swing on and have fun, and five kids can swing on right. and have fun. So again. And that's, that's really what we kept in mind with this playground is we, while it's fun to play on your own, we want kids to be encouraged to socialize and get out and learn teamwork and communication and how to invite children to play with them and how to ask to join somebody playing. So we really want to have that, not only um, social inclusion, but also the ability for anybody who may not be as able-bodied, they're still able to use all of the same equipment. Question in the back? Oh. Is the wetland wet? Only, no, it's only not. Only when it rains. Only when it rains. It'll be wet when it rains. We. We haven't really worked on that yet. We're still trying to develop. What? I know. It is hot. The problem with water, and, and there may be some water features for other reasons. We're looking at some other things for other reasons, for noise control and things like that. The problem with water where you get into it is the maintenance of that is tremendous. Um, it's very, very difficult to keep those things clean enough because you have to have a full chlorine. It's just like having a, a commercial pool. It's a full chlorination filtering system. Uh, there's a whole lot of requirements that go in. So we're trying to figure out how to, because it is ocean, how do you incorporate some water features into this but make it so, yeah, misters maybe or something like that because you, it is hot. So we just got to figure that out. We haven't gotten that far yet. We got to get a concept first and then we can start getting into some details. Yeah, misters. So I, Susan just said a good idea. You know, this is a wetland area, and maybe there's a way to, in, to develop some misters in this that we would put in as part of our site work, where when you're on there, there's some mist coming in. That would be a really cool, I think that would be a cool idea. Although not enough to make them wet so you can't climb on I them. think you'd have children, like, slipping off of that. Yeah, so we have to be careful. Because remember, that is metal. All of those poles are metal, yeah. so oh, go they, they'll, they'll be powder-coated. But. Yeah, but they got to hear you. Um, oh, okay. Uh, I, I just feel like as a person with a seven-year-old child at this point, I will tell you that we, you don't go to a park here in the summer in a, to a playground because it's just too oppressively hot if there's no water feature there. So either work it out or you're not going to have, you know, your parks getting used all that much in the summer. Yeah, that, I think that's a great point, and that's why we're, we're trying to – one of the things is shade. That's important, but that does not all in the summertime. So we've got to work on those details. We've had a lot of comments. People want some kind of water feature. We've got some ideas on how to do that. You might want to check out the Fun Depot in Orlando. They have a mist that blows across, and it's for that reason to get. Yeah, and maybe it's a place where it doesn't get slippery. We can use it. But I do like the mister idea. I think that's a good idea somewhere in here so you can get in and cool off a little bit. So... We just got to figure out how to make that work. What about a canopy over this area, canopies, or right? So, so we definitely. This is one of the areas that right now we've got to work on the shade for this this piece and this. Well, this piece will have shade. 
This piece is, because of its location, it's a little tough to get some trees planted in here. There will be a bunch of trees back here, but that's north. You've got the high school here that's going to provide shade, morning shade. Afternoon, you're going to have trees over here that have, but that midday, you're, far, you're too far away from the Kapok tree to get that shade. So we're going to have to work on something in that area. We haven't, we just got to think through it and think about how do we make sure there's shade on these pieces. Now, there may be a place where, yeah, in the middle of the day, there's no shade. But in the morning and the afternoon, it's great because um, you just can't, it's hard to shade everything. But yeah, canopy, things like that. So we'll look at that. Yeah, that's an idea. So that's a good idea. So we'll look into that and see what so we can do. They look up, they're seeing right. Or something. And it doesn't have to be solid shade, too. It can be a mesh because that provides the shade that you need the UV protection. All right, so. Oh. How hot do those metal poles get? So heat on the metal poles. That is a concern that we have, so. Right. Yeah, and under, it's understandable. Um, these aren't going to hold a whole lot of heat. Uh, it'll also, I believe that area is going to be, it's shaded. It's not shaded that much. we got to work on that part. But so. the, the metal poles, all of our, first of all, they're powder coated. And they're, they're not black. So the blues and greens tend to not hold heat as much as anything darker, like the black or a darker navy blue, anything like that. Um, but the powder coating does kind of give it, you know, it, it, it's not going to get as hot as if it was straight metal. I, I really don't, th I mean, I don't think. Right, and I, and I will say our wonderful, great landscape architects here, and he's listening yes. to these comments, so he's got to figure out how to make these things happen. So Ask him he's that. listening to the comments <laughs> very intently. <laughs> right, he's got to get, we, we've got to get this kind of stuff laid out so then he knows where he can put the right kind of trees. So that's a great point, though. All right, one more. The poles, are they a sharp on the end as they appear? They're, they're rounded edges, but in order to get up there, you would probably need a bucket truck. They're or pretty a scissor tall. Lift. They're very tall. Yeah, so they're very if you tall. Look, you if, won't be able to right. climb. So if you look, this is the climbing area, this is the top. There's no way you're going to get from there all the way to the top of these tall, these tall posts. You just, you're not going to be able to get there. Um, no. No. These are metal. They're, right. Yeah, they're uh, galvanized steel. So basically what we try to do is say, how do we get tree climbing in the park? And that was one of the ways we looked at getting tree climbing. All right, so let me get back to what do we think? What do we think about the clamshell swings? I'm seeing lots of yeses on that one. This one, what do you think about this? All right, it fits. I mean, it does fit Florida. I mean, it's, it's, that's what Florida yeah. is. Sawgrass, yeah. kind of that. All right, risky. so let's see what else we got here. All right, so fitness area for adults. Remember, we don't want to leave adults out, so it's a park. So we've come up with some ideas on, on these are these outdoor fitness things that are, that are uh, um, hydraulically controlled so you can get the whatever resistance you need mm -hmm. to do a workout. And I think the way these are designed, there's, there's like, I don't know, probably 15 or 16 different things you can do in this circuit. So um, these are going to be laid out, if you notice, in this, this, is the, this is that playground area. This is this, this park that's around the Kapok tree with some other plantings in here. We have a big public art piece here, a very iconic public art piece down in this corner, so you'll be able to sit in some benches, but you can work out. So it's a really, it's a, it's a quiet place where you can get some exercise, and you can sit, and you can do other things. So a little bit different than a playground, but it fits with play for adults. Because remember, we, we want to we address for things for everybody. So what do we think about this? Have you measured the walkway so people know, like, is it a quarter mile or something exact so that people can actually measure out their distances? We would do that. We don't know yet. He's got to finish designing it so we can get a measurement. <laughs> He's not finished designing it. But absolutely, you want, if you're going to use it as an exercise area, you need to mark it out. So you're right. How long are those arms sticking out and how high are they off the ground? Are, are, like, little rice arms? So I think these are pretty close rendering so you can see how they stick out. But if you notice, we're putting them back into these circles so they're not on the walkway. You have to come down and go into them. But yeah, you can see kind of, that's probably pretty realistic, right? Pretty close? I, that's a, yeah, they're very realistic. However, you guys are good. You're giving me questions that I don't know the answers to. <laughs> um, do they, they don't extend out longer you, you the, they come the way they are so you, the arms aren't going to get longer or shorter the resistance is the only variable 
So what do you think about exercise equipment in this park for adults? I like it. I think it's, oh, oh, we got a little bit. Let me, oh, oh, oh. Uh, my, only question, my only question is the walkways. Are you taking into consideration that we have a number of senior citizens who may have walkers who, who yeah. obviously are handicapped? That's a great question. So the answer is absolutely. All of these walkways are wide, smooth, and, and so wheelchair accessible, mm -hmm. a walker accessible. Everything we're designing is, is ADA accessible and more. We're actually going above and beyond what the standards are. So yeah, we gotta, we gotta design things so everybody can enjoy it. And to, yeah, oh. that, to that comment as well, you'll notice that these are designed with an arm length that's long enough so that if you are in a wheelchair, you can still use the right. equipment. That's why you see these long arms, because you, these, are, these are ADA accessible workouts. So if you're in a wheelchair, you can use this equipment. I was just going to ask about uh, water fountains or water, bottle fillers. Yes, so we are going to definitely build in water fountains, bottle fillers, and things like that. Those are things that are required in downtown areas. Again, we're going to have a lot of events here. Um, that's part of the hardscape that's got to be designed. We've got to kind of get a layout of this first so we know where to put that stuff. These, these parks also, we're designing in right now some restrooms. So we're going to have a couple of restrooms just for the park so you don't have to go into one of the buildings. So that's the other thing we heard back from the public is, Let's put restrooms right there because when families are there, they don't want to have to walk someplace. They want to be able to go right there with their kids. So we're designing those in. All right, so let's see what else. Whoop. All right, one more. <laughs> no, it's fine. That's what we're here for. Do you anticipate any group activities in, in this park where people would bring chairs to put on this rubble and all that kind of stuff? Well, that's, not, that's going to be a no-no. Um, no, I think, I think there will be times where we have festivals and stuff that, that we could do that. Now, we have to be careful because you don't want to be right under the play equipment if kids are playing. But I think if somebody, if we have an event, one of the ideas that we have, am I standing in the way, is when we have big events out there, we have a big amphitheater, we have an amphitheater, and let's say there's a concert going on or a play. Parents come out there, they're watching that, and, they, and their kids are getting a little anxious, so they can take their kids over. We're also going to have speakers throughout this too, so if there's a concert going on, you can walk over to the playground. Be listening to the concert and still having your kids play. So you may have your chairs. You just bring them over and you set up your chairs. Yeah, absolutely. We're not going to discourage that. Now, we will have some controls in place. There's certain places you can do it and certain places you can't. I mean, we'll have to, we have to watch people like we always do. I mean, if somebody does, let's say somebody sets up right under the swing set. That's probably not real smart. So we'll probably say, hey, don't set up there. Nobody can use a swing set. But yeah, so the answer is we want it as open as possible but with a few controls in there. And we'll have ambassadors at, especially during events that will help control that. So, all right, any other questions on this? Are both of the play areas completely enclosed in a fence? So that's a great question. The answer right now is no, but we don't know how much. That's again, we wanna lay it out and then we're gonna look at security and make sure that it's safe for children. We also don't wanna make it a prison for children either. So it needs to be safe, but not a prison. We don't want them running under, I know some people say, yeah, make it a prison, so we can just set them in there. The whole idea, though, is we want the kids to not just enjoy the equipment. We want to be able to get into the grass, too. Because, again, in an urban environment, kids don't get a lot of grass either. I mean, we have a lot of places that kids live in places that don't have grass. They can get to the park and they get in some grass and things. So the answer is yes, we will have fencing, but it's be, it'll be put where it needs to be put to protect the children. So, absolutely. So there would be some fencing there. So you don't want kids running out in cars, running out in the street, running out. So, and it's not just fencing. There'll be some hardscape put in too, where you may not have to have a fence because you have some hardscaping that they can't get past. So there's a variety of ways to protect that. That's the overall design. This, this site is being designed so when you come down there, you can feel completely safe, you and your family and anybody that's with you, uh, that feel safe. Because we, one of the things we are doing, you won't be able to go anywhere in this, par in this area without being on camera. So if you don't want to be on camera, okay, because we will have, and that's for security. These are public areas, and we have to have security to make sure people feel safe. And when people feel safe, they're going to use it. So the answer is, is we will be using fencing where necessary. Where are the bathrooms? Okay, so the bathrooms, let me go back a little bit here. Let's see if I can, whoops. Let me go back to, uh, okay, I'll use this plan. So right now, we're planning the bathrooms right in this area right here. So they're halfway in between both areas. Very open, very exposed, make sure they're transparent, not the inside, but the outside, so you can see what's going on. So if you're, set, if you're over here and you're sitting at a bench over here and your seven-year-old needs to go, you can see them where they're going, you can see them going to the bathroom, you can see them coming out. Again, security is key 
to these? So the answer is yes, we're putting in a couple of bathrooms um, for the playgrounds. They will be closed when the playgrounds are closed. That's another way to discourage the stuff we don't want to happen in playgrounds. <laughs> so, anyways, I think I saw another question in the back. Okay, any other? So here's what we're going to do is I'm just going to take a couple questions. Let me see if I can get all the way to the end here. Whoops. All right, I can't get this. All right, so what do we got questions? That transition space between the two, you didn't show that. Yeah, so it could, except that it's a loading place, loading zone for the high school. So what the idea there is, let's put some stuff, we have concrete there, let's make it look nice. And let's put some games on that concrete, hopscotch, I don't know. This is where we need the kids' input. What do they like to play? I mean, <laughs> we got to figure that out. Yeah. Yeah, that's a great point about skating. Um, skating is one of those things that kids want to do everywhere, but where they do it tears everything up. So we're going to have to be careful how we design things so we don't, there's nothing, if you notice these pieces of equipment, none of them really have a place to skate on. And the rubber you're not going to skate on. So we're doing that on purpose to discourage it here. The city doesn't have a skate park. I understand that. That's something that if the residents want, we need to, in 10 years from now, 15 years from now, maybe we can afford one, but not here downtown. There's no room for it. And so we're designing it so it discourages that. I know kids do it, but it's not, this is not the right location. So we're trying to discourage it. Yeah. We've talked about it. <laughs> We've talked about it. Um, kids are going to find ways to entertain themselves. Our job in this is to develop a plan to have let kids have as much fun as they want without damaging themselves or the equipment. So the answer is, is some of this equipment, you can do some of that on. And we're going to encourage it on the equipment. If they go up into the ports of the high school and start bouncing off the windows, we're going to say, no, you can't do that. <laughs> so it's, that's, that's our job is to make sure we have the security in place to make sure people are doing the right thing. And if you encourage, if you, this is, this is something we talk about all the time, if you encourage the right behavior by putting the right things in, they won't do the wrong thing. So that's really the idea here is put things in that are so fun that they don't have to go bounce off the walls because they can right. go jump off the jellyfish. And thinking so. about parkour, um, we, we also, Compan does design parkour, but what you'll look at is with those, the grass blades, with that um, ship for the smaller kids, with the frog, those types of things, and even the jellyfish. I mean, those kids can climb those ropes. So that really gives them the same, um, I guess, exercise value as doing parkour officially. Now, granted, we're not encouraging them jumping off of walls and roof, between rooftops like the one guy and then hit a FPL power line. We're not doing that. Um, but we still want them to be physically challenged. So all of this play equipment, we kind of took all of that into consideration in making sure the design was new and fresh, still artistic, but still included the values that we want our kids learning as far as the physical challenge, um, you know, the social interaction, teamwork, all of that. So, so what's next, and I'll take some questions, but what's next is, I want to cover this before I forget. <laughs> so, um, so what's next, we're going to take all this input. We actually got some good input tonight. We'll take this input. We're going to keep, keep tweaking this plan a little bit. Uh, we're going to start working on the hardscape that goes with it. We're going to bring that back out to the public. Okay, here's where we're going. This is a phased process. So the way we're looking at this playground, and I do want to talk about this a little bit, is um, it, it's really a, a, a three- to five-year plan. Um, because of the way the construction is, you can't build everything at once. We just can't, we can't get to the property. Um, you won't see anything even starting being built to probably, you know, May or so of 2020, simply because the areas aren't going to be available to build in. So what we're looking at is we're going to try to come up with a plan that we can build over the time as places become available and we can get the equipment in. Um, this is about, and I'm going to be honest with the money, this is about a million dollar plan. We don't have that in the budget. We have about a round number, half a million in the budget. That doesn't mean we can't do it. It means we're going to have to work really hard to find ways to fund the whole thing. And that's what our job is, is to try to find ways to fund this, to do the whole thing over one or two years. The point is, is we're building this project in phases. So when City Hall is finished, the whole playground won't be finished, mainly because it's not going to be available to be finished. So it'll be finished as, as the project goes on. The whole project as a whole is about 40 months, uh, starting from about three months ago. 
Um, so it'll go into 2021. You may see some of this equipment can't be installed to 2021. But the goal is, is we want to build a full park. We're building a park that's the play area alone is, is, is 35,000 square feet or so, plus another bunch of square foot for the adult areas and the fun stuff like that. So what we're trying to do is we want to show the whole thing. We know we have a little bit of a funding issue. We're going to, need, we're going to find ways to do that. Um, and that's our goal. It just may take a little bit. So the next steps for us is to work with Compton and our, and our engineers and our site designer and our landscape architect um, to finalize some plans. Everybody seems to like these, so we're going to continue moving forward in this direction. We got to tweak a bunch of things. We got a bunch of comments tonight that we got to build into these and see how do we address those. Um, and then, so the next step is we got to put together a final set of plans because what's happening right now is the underground stuff's going in. So I got to make sure I've got water in all these places, electricity where I need it, that I've got foundations in the right places because all that's got to go in first before you can put anything else in. So that's really the next step is to do that design, and then you'll start seeing things happen. But the playground itself is out in 2020 because the land itself is not available. The, most likely the first phase will be the toddler's area because that will be available earlier than the other side and we'll build into it as time. So that's really the next steps. We're still going to be putting it out there. We're going to want comments. We still want comments coming in. So um, that's where we want to go. So I'm going to just take a couple more questions and then we can end. So let me go in the back and I'll work front. So raise your hand if you got a question. I'm going to bring you the microphone. About having any kind of community garden? You know, actually, I was, I was thinking about that. When we look at the chicken and, and farm building, is it urban gardening? That farm to, to table thing is becoming very popular right now. And what better way than behind the, the kids' museum to teach kids about growing food than right there? Right. So, yeah. right up my alley. We just put a, we just put a uh, garden at the Yeah, so that's something actually we can work with the schoolhouse museum and make it a learning thing. That's a great idea. All right, questions. I'm going to work my way forward. <laughs> you mentioned about, well, most parks in Boynton, you just use, uh, take your kids there, your grands or whatever. But you mentioned cameras uh, at, at this park. Is there something different? Is there going to be cameras in addition to a physical person there or monitoring the activity? Or what, why, why, why the cameras on this one? So security is a serious issue for the city. And so it's not just this park. Um, cameras are a way that the city can stretch its security resources uh, because you can't have a person everywhere at all times. We know that. And we, have a, we live in a different environment than we did 10 years ago. I mean, the environment is different. The culture is different. So our job is to make sure that people feel safe. Cameras are one of the ways we can do that. So when I say there's cameras, there's cameras. Other parks will have cameras also. This is not just here. But it's really a security issue. They are monitored. Uh, there will be monitored. I don't want to. I don't talk publicly too much about all of the security for a very specific reason. Um, but but our, our what we're trying to do is make this so when somebody comes there, they know we are safe. We know we're safe. We feel safe. We know we're safe. And we know there's that level of security that somebody's watching for the bad guy. And we're going to know when they show up, and we're going to be able to deal with it right away. And that's the whole idea. Now that's the be that's the, the the dark side of what we have to do in our jobs. But we have to think about that. So that's why we're doing that. And we are doing it in a lot of places. Public places. We don't put security cameras in private places. It's all public. <laughs> so, all right, Mike, yeah. Yes, can you go back to the site plan? If I can. Let me see. Whoops. <laughs> okay. All right. Here, use my pointer right there. There's that, that bottom button right there. I know the train has left the station, but it's never been explained to me why this could not have been built over here. This area is actually bigger. And then Kids Kingdom could have been kept and the k pop tree. Why wasn't that put there? It's a very good question, and I can give you the answer. The answer is, is we had several options. We presented them, and this was the option that was chosen to move forward. And there was a lot of reasons. Yes, it could have been done other ways. Absolutely. I'm not going to say it can't be. There's a lot of ways. But the, the idea was we wanted a central park area for the concert area that the, that the city hall is overlooking with the, with the big lobby of city hall. That's a whole different function, but this is a big lobby overlooking this. We wanted a central event area in the central of the park, and we wanted it surrounded by residential and retail work. So that's why it was chosen. Yes, there's one KPOC tree. Two years ago, we said there's a KPOC tree, tree that will have to come out. Now, 
We're looking for ways to... There, I actually got a call today from somebody who says, hey, we'll come get it and move it. Hey, if somebody wants to come and get it and move it, we're going to stand out of the way. But unfortunately, that's one tree. We're saving the other tree. We're saving some big banyan trees. We're saving some oaks. We're trying to save. We've transplanted over 130 trees out of this into other parks. So yes, the answer is, could we have done it? Absolutely. It wasn't what was chosen. This was the option that was chosen. So anyways, I, I know that probably doesn't make you it, you know, it's, but that's the answer. Well, Kids Kingdom was, was my idea, and it was built by a thousand people, volunteers, and I got over a thousand hours in it myself. And the point was, by not keeping it, it's a broken covenant. We, nobody would have worked on it if they would have known, oh, 18 year old le years later, we're going to bulldoze it because city staff thinks it's better to be bulldozed. They would have never been built. Now, the other part of it was, I noticed it wasn't even used as a design element. And then the other part was at the August 28th meeting, there was some agreement, I believe, perhaps I misheard everything, was that we're going to save the names and make uh, plaques with all the names that were on the pickets. Also, the front um, uh, sign was going to be saved and the castle entrance. But I notice none of that is in your plan. Right, so I can answer that. So on that, the castle entrance and the sign, we're waiting for, we're not saying we're getting rid of it. We're waiting really for some involvement to figure out how we can put that and use that entrance as part of the feature in it. So your answer is yes, we're still going to try to do that. The pickets, most people picked up their pickets. We offered to the people, they picked them up. But the pickets that are left, we, can, we have them. We can do something with them. So that's where we can get some public involvement. Yes, and we, we, we've already, we, we have the list of names we're trying to figure out. That's, that's not playground equipment, so that's why we didn't address it tonight, but we are going to address that. We're, we're, we've got that in the list of things that we want to address. Some of this we're going to go out and say, hey, we need some public input and actually some public help and say, what do you want to do with this? We can make something, we can do some artwork. I mean, I'll, where did she go? Debbie. Oh, she left. Okay. Debbie and I have talked about some things we can do with it. I didn't know she left, but we've talked about some things. So the answer is, is those aren't done yet. We're not, we're not saying we're not doing it. We just need to know how we fit that in. But those aren't playground pieces of equipment. Those are, those are, those are going to become, what's the word I'm looking for? It's really art pieces that go into the, into the park. So we just got to figure out how we're going to use them. So the camera isn't a playground. Not... Not in the current uh, way that playgrounds are designed, no. But it can be used as a component in the site. We just got to figure out where it goes. And I know we're getting ready to, I think we're trying to set something up with you to kind of talk about how do, we, how do we remove it, how do we, we've talked about that before. So we'll get into that and work through that. We just, we got to work with some people that know how that thing was built. There were two so. other things in the August 28th meeting, or not 28th, the August meeting was, first of all, Yes. So if, if you've noticed in the playground, we have fire lanes designed into the playgrounds when they're needed. We have assembly areas designed in. So the life safety issues have been addressed for that very reason. Yes, we have to, we have to meet those assembly areas and those life safety fire lane areas. So yes, they are. And actually, one of the drawings, if you saw, it said fire lane on it. It actually showed where that was. So um, we have addressed that. We didn't want to show all that because there's a lot of detail to that. But we didn't show all that. Did you have another? I'm sorry. I was going to. Okay, one more. Barbara and I brought up at the August meeting or the timeline was that uh, splitting it into elderly or older and younger play, uh, kids was that if a family has kids that span that age group, you can't watch both sets at the same time. And you know, you said you can stand like 40 yards from the two year old and see both areas. But you know, I, I've read about and I've been seeing some European playgrounds, and the only people that'll stand 40 yards from their two year old kid are, are Germans. <laughs> yeah, that, that's a good point. So, I again, I. I offense to that yeah. being German. <laughs> so, um, the way these are designed, when we say zero to five, like I said before, really eight, nine, ten year olds can still play on parts of that. So, if you've got a family of multiple kids that are that, that age range, 
Um, you, you can play on one side or the other. Toddlers on the other side is not as much for them to do, but you know, if they're playing with their older brother or older sister, they're going to play on some of these things at the lower parts of it, underneath it and all that. And so the answer is, is she's got a better you, answer. I'm just well, giving you, you my... Think about the toddlers, yeah, let's right. say the, you know, the really little tykes, right? And you have, let's say, the frog structure. The little kid's going to learn the texture. It's going to hold on and maybe like bounce and jump or like maybe try to kind of move a little bit or go side to side. So when you think just because that structure is deemed a 5 to 12, yes, it's made for 5 to 12. It's not made for a little guy. But can he stand there and watch his big brother or big sister climb that? He absolutely can. Um, you don't want to put your kid up on top of there. You know, you don't want to put your 2-year-old or three-year-old on the top of it. Um, but again, again, they're well, designed... Well, my parents would, but normal parents would not. <laughs> we don't... Compan does not condone that. Um, but we, we, you know, we design them so that the family can play together. Let's say you do have an 18-month-old, right? And you have a six-year-old, and you're on that park. You can sit in the bird nest swing and swing with the child, the parent can hold the child and swing with them. So you can incorporate play and teach the child, you know, these different play values, even though maybe they're not, you know, five years old or, you know, the right age or height or strength to be able to really have the, the full challenge of the structures. But that's the beauty of the graduated risk. You know, they, it keeps them coming back. This park has a lot of holding power where a, a young child can't master this park in one visit. You know, we want kids to come back. We want it to be a challenge. We want them to continue to have fun there because every time they meet a new kid, they get a new challenge because they see somebody do something differently. Um, so that's really the thought behind that. Um, I, I wouldn't, I think being adults, it's very hard for us to really open our imagination to the degree that young children have. I think we try to put everything in a box and categorize it and have buckets for how you play on things, how you perceive things, how you manage and deal with risk. Um, children's are, children are really the masters of that. Um, and I think this park really gives them the ability to um, utilize that imagination and that risk-taking ability and that socialization and challenge. Um, so, you know, I, I appreciate for sure the, the concern. You definitely want families to play together. And I think this definitely addresses it. You know, you could have the child crawling and kind of feeling that rubber, the surfacing. Um, there's a lot of stuff that children can do that, as adults, we may not see. So, yeah, so we're, we understand the concern. We have a family with a broad range. That's why we're trying to make it so you can be in one area or the other. But if you have a range of, like, to two, to two to seven, two to eight, and you're in that toddler area, for an eight-year-old, that ship and those spinners are going to be a a ball fun. They'll have all the fun they want. So I think it's designed so you can bridge that, that gap um, and not have to make them go in separate areas, unless you really want them to. <laughs> but that's, that's their, okay, a couple more questions, but we're getting to near the end. Okay, this is a landscaping question. Okay, cool. um, how many of the oak trees on the west side of the existing playground are you going to be able to keep? Um, we're, no, uh, on the west side. Every, every oak tree behind, that's right behind, is all being kept, and there's a couple going both ways. We're actually keeping almost all of them that are back in that area. I think all of them, actually. I don't think we're getting rid of any of the oak trees. There, there four oak trees right. And four, are being saved. and four are being saved. So there's four oaks and four are being saved. We took out the sable palms? Sable palms. We're going to put some trees back, because we felt the sable palms didn't really fit that area, so we're putting some other... That's a comment. Right, and, and, and she always makes that comment anyway, so I had to think, Susan doesn't like palms, so we've got to put something else in. She was always channeling her. <laughs> That's right. All right, a couple more questions. Well, uh, I'm, just, I'm just curious, how close is the uh, eastern playground to the old high school? Is there a sidewalk between? Yes, the yes, yes. It's not that close. Your picture looks like it's like... Yeah, it's, it's, it's hard the curse to tell of from a 2D. picture. Yeah, yeah it, but it is. There's a sidewalk there because we have to have that pedestrian pathway, and that's where I'm, we're looking at a couple of hardscape issues between there and the high school to kind of do some protection. We haven't quite, yeah, we haven't quite figured all of that out yet. We're still working on it. It's what my great landscape architect's here for. <laughs> okay, I've got a couple like nitpicky questions. Um, on the pathway for the adults, I'm. Have you guys thought about doing that in cement? lighting like the little LED lights that kind of phase you you can do a 
like an ombre spread out to more concentrate to direct people a certain direction? Or are you thinking about doing something like that with the lighting? As far as the kids areas, the adult areas, and the cement areas? Yeah, we haven't gone that far. We did look into that one time and it's really expensive. So we kind of said, we can kind of do the same thing with some site lighting and kind of similar. All of our lighting, and that's a great question on lighting, it's nothing to do with playgrounds. But we are using a lot of that LED lighting that we have on the water tower. So we can do, yes, and warm white and all that. And so we, 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 we're working on all of that. Putting them into the concrete is pretty expensive. And, it, and the maintenance on it, there may be, uh, we're looking at some decorative concrete too. We also, somebody brought up the, the paint that shows up in the when it rains. We're definitely going to, we're working on that. That's something we want to do something with that. We don't know where. Oh, here. <laughs> but yes, you do need that paint because Justin and I suggest that regularly. Um, my other thing is, um, since we do want water, is there a way to do like a little pathway of water so you have like a couple little spouts as you walk down a pathway versus doing a whole splash pad. So you're still getting, like I sent you pictures from UF where they have very tiny splash pads. So you're getting that splash pad effect that people want without the tremendous cost and maintenance that you're crazy upset about. Yeah. So that's the thing we've got to figure out. This is about the playground equipment. We've got to figure out that. What are we going to do with it? Yeah, it be There's been a, and it, and yes. Um, there's so many options on that. We've got to just sit down and kind of list it out. We've, we've kind of talked about it. You know, do we do a full splash pad? Do we do a water feature that's like a fountain? Do we? <laughs> you, I have all of your ideas. I have a list of ideas. So, yeah, so we're going to try to address that. Uh, you know, again, it goes back to priorities. It may be something that's in phase two. Um, you know, the question is, is do we give up a big piece of playground equipment and put something like that in, or we do that in phase two, make sure we plumb for it, make sure it's ready. I, we got to get a concept first that we can build toward, and that's what tonight was. We want to make sure we have something we can build toward because you got to have equipment so now you can fit everything in that's around it. And so I'm going to end this because we're getting close to the end. Any more, one more question if anybody has one. I'll keep one more. All right, seeing none. I didn't give you a lot of chance, but that's okay. Um, so I think what I heard tonight, and you guys tell me if I'm wrong, what I heard was is overall I think everybody liked the concepts and all that. I think we got some great ideas with some of the historic things, building those back in. I think we heard some great ideas on some water things. I think um, um, you know, Mike had some good points on some, some security and some things we need to address. We do need to address a couple of Mike's issues with the, with the existing park, um, figure out how to incorporate those things in. Um, we know we want to do it. We just got to figure out how to do it. And, and, and there's a lot of different options. So I, we've heard that, um, you know, we're going to make sure we work on the colors and the design of the surface. I heard that. So I think we got a lot of really good input that we can take and now and, and continue building this a little bit and get a better, um, uh, uh, keep working on the product. Again, this is, this is a, you know, three to five year project because we've got to build it into the budget and build it into the project, because it is a big project. This is a very large project the city's building. So um, I think you'll see, we'll probably put some more stuff out as we further develop it. We definitely have some site plan where you see all the hardscape and trees. Everybody, well, where's the trees? We're, we don't have all that yet, but when we get it, we're gonna be putting that out for comment. Um, you know, how we do the gardens, the, the, the community gardens, a great idea behind there. I think we can build some of these things in. So we gotta keep finishing it, and then what we have to do is once we finish some of these designs, we gotta take it and fit it into the budget, and does it fit? If it doesn't fit, what do we change to make it fit the budget? Um, the goal here is we wanna design something that's fantastic for Boynton Beach, and unique to Boynton Beach. We don't want something that other people have. And I think what you saw here is stuff that nobody else really has. So it's very unique to us, and it tried to, we tried to fit the theme. Did we, did we hit every theme in Boynton Beach? No, I don't think you can. But we tried to hit as many as we could. I'm still trying to figure out how to do a sailfish on one of those things, but we'll figure it out. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and close, and we'll be here for a little while if you've got specific questions and all that. We'll be here, you know, 10, 15 minutes. And I've got the design team here. We've got our, our park expert. We've got our landscape architects here. We've got our public out, outdoor space um, artist here. <laughs> she has lots of titles. Let's see, who else is here? Uh, we've... Yeah, we've got our project managers here uh, from E2L um, that are here, So, and I'll stay around for a little bit, so if you got any questions. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and end, and thank you very much. We appreciate you coming. Thank you.